Welcome to this latest installment of Zoom with ZOA. This is Alan Jay, Acting Director of Outreach and Engagement here at Zionist Organization of America. We're hoping and praying that everybody on the phone and those you love and care about remain safe and healthy. I hope you've been able to catch some of our previous programming, and we've got a lot of more terrific programming coming up, which you'll hear about at tonight's program. Tonight, we're privileged to hear from ZOA National President Mort Klein and ZOA National Board Chair Mark Levinson, who will speak to you about ZOA's concerns about Hyas and Hyas's former chair becoming chair of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. Tonight, there will be no live Q&A. Rather, questions that were submitted prior to the call and questions that are submitted in the chat will get to, will be asked by the panel and answered by the panel, time permitting. Zionist Organization of America was founded in 1897 and has been at the forefront of pro-Israel and pro-Jewish advocacy for more than 120 years. Through our Center for Law and Justice, Department of Government Relations, and ZOA campus, in the halls of Congress and in media, in your neighborhood, ZOA shares truth and facts about supporting Israel's right to be and remain a sovereign nation, a sovereign Jewish state, including Judea and Samaria, with Jerusalem as her undivided capital, and with the right to defend herself if and whenever necessary. Now let's get on with the program. Mark Levinson is the co-chair of the Real Estate Department, chair of Real Estate Transactions Practice Group at the distinguished firm of Sills, Commons and Gross in New Jersey and New York. Uh, Mark chairs the firm's Israel Business Practice Group, and he's also a member of the United States Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad, appointed by President Donald Trump. Mark is the chairman of the New Jersey Israel Commission, appointed by the governor of New Jersey. But perhaps the greatest of greatest importance to us here at ZOA is that Mark is the chairman of the Zionist Organization of American National Board. I had the privilege of working together with Mark this past winter as he spearheaded the very successful ZOA coalition effort in the WZC elections, the results of which was that ZOA quadrupled its votes and near doubled our seats in the upcoming WZC Congress. It is my pleasure to turn the program over to my colleague and friend and one of the fiercest defenders of Zionism and of the Jewish people. Mark, the program's yours. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much Mark. for a nice introduction. I want to also thank you. Yes. Can you hear me, Alan? Alan? Can you hear me? We hear you well, Mark. You're okay. Uh, yes, very I want to thank you. Okay, Alan, I want to thank you for I want to thank you for the nice introduction. I also want to thank you and Natalie, Natalie Lazaroff. Uh, we have a tremendous staff at ZOA. Uh, this pandemic has been very hard on everyone, and certainly uh, running the ZOA during this time period with our dedicated staff like Alan and Natalie and others. We've been able to do a tremendous job with all these webinars, book clubs, so on and so forth. So we thank everyone for being here in this program. Uh, I don't see all the faces on because I'm limited to one screen, but I see some uh, old good friends of ZOA, some young good friends of COA, some new friends of ZOA. And uh, we hope that you are with us not only now, but in the future, we have so many challenges ahead with us. It's really my privilege and pleasure tonight um, I, I have the honor to be co-hosting this with my very dear friend and beloved icon of the Jewish people, Mort Klein. Uh, much of what we're going to talk about tonight, you're going to hear from Mort. I'm going to give a little bit of an overview now. I'll have some comments. I'll, I'll ask Mort the questions. But really, much of what we're going to hear is really thoughts and, and, and comments from one of the great Jewish leaders of, of today not just today, but really for the uh, 26 years he's been leading ZOA. So as Alan mentioned, ZOA was founded in 1897 at the first World Zionist Congress. ZOA was there. ZOA has been there since 1897. A lot of great leaders at ZOA in our history. Uh, the next thing that I, I want to mention as we move from 1897 to 1956. In 1956, the Conference of Presidents <laughs> of Major American Jewish Organizations um, were, uh, was, was established. And it was established during the Eisenhower administration. Um, the Secretary of State at that time, not necessarily a great friend of ours, 
but uh, John Foster Dulles was Secretary of State. And as legend has it, he was tired of hearing from too many different uh, Jewish organizations uh, commenting on or complaining or wanting access to the administration, uh, mainly on matters relating to Israel. He encouraged the formation <laughs> of the Conference of Presidents, or at least an organization that would represent all the Jewish views. And since 1956, the Conference of Presidents has been there. ZOA is a charter member of the Conference of Presidents. We've been a proud member. We've been active. We've been there. We've made our views known. And, and frankly, as you'll hear tonight, some of our views aren't necessarily where a lot of the members of the conference are, but that's, that's where we are tonight. So I want to talk for just a minute or so, a couple minutes, about uh, some of the essential principles of ZOA. Uh, many of you, if not all of you, have heard Mort speak, hopefully many times. You see our press releases. You see what were published in the newspapers. You see where we get praised or attacked, depending where you sit. And so I just want to go over with you a couple of the key issues and areas where ZOA feels so strongly about and is out there in the forefront. First of all, ZOA strongly believes that all Jews have the right to live anywhere in the world, but specifically, they have the right to live anywhere and should have the right to live anywhere in Judea and Samaria, Yehuda and Shomron, okay? Secondly, the right of Israel and its citizens to be free of any and all attacks, acts of terrorism, really should be incontrovertible. There should be no acceptable or de minimis level of terrorism. ZOA believes there should be no act of terrorism committed against any Jew or any citizen of the state of Israel. That should be sacrosanct. And if there's violation of that, to think that people should get paid or funds from the United States or any other country is absurd. Thirdly, ZOA strongly believes that there should be zero tolerance for any act of anti-Semitism. ZOA is against any form of bigotry, whether it's on ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic origin, uh, gender, race, country of birth. There should be no discrimination against anyone, but specifically there should be no discrimination against Jews and there should be no anti-Semitism. What happened a week or so ago in New York City during this pandemic, where the mayor of New York City basically tarred the whole Jewish community because of some social distancing violations at a funeral, which had been coordinated with the police, was disgraceful and despicable. He was called out by some. He should have been called out by anyone. Just fill in the blank, fill in another ethnicity, race, any other categorization of, of, of uh, individuals you can. The mayor would not have done that to any other group. Why he found it necessary to pick on the Jewish community at the large was absolutely disgraceful. Okay, ZOA next. Iran. ZOA fully supports President Trump's withdrawing from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. And we've been proven right what Israel found, what the, what the Mossad found in terms of uh, the treasure trove of documents that they uncovered in the warehouse in Iran just goes to prove what a ridiculous and, and disastrous deal that was. And thank goodness the President of the United States ripped up that deal. Another issue of significant concern to ZOA. ZOA is dead set against the proposal by some recent presidential candidates that the United States should again start to fund the terrorist supporting Palestinian Authority. Disgraceful and outrageous, okay? And then coming up just around the corner in the next few months, the incredibly important issue of Israel's right to assert sovereignty over a portion of Judea and Samaria, Yehuda and Shomron, areas, frankly, where there are very few, if any, Palestinians living. So on these issues and many others, including the withdrawal from Gaza, including the Oslo Accords, ZOA has often stood alone, including at the Conference of Presidents. And that really leads us to the current dispute and the issue that we're going to be talking about tonight in the Conference of Presidents elections. And so just as we segue into that, and I introduce Mort to chat about a few of his thoughts before we move on to the Q&A, mm -hmm. I just want to contrast the recent world Zionist elections, which we worked on very hard. ZOA put together a coalition of 27 of the strongest pro-Israel organizations and groups in America. And in the elections, which ran from January 21st to March 11th, as Alan pointed out, ZOA quadrupled what the votes we got five years ago. 
but just as importantly to ZOA, the organizations that some view as center, center, right, together, we collected 52% of the votes in the WZC elections. To my knowledge, and I think it's pretty accurate, there is, this is the first time where a majority of the votes in the WZC elections from the United States have resulted in a center, center, right majority. And that is so important, not just because of billions of dollars in stake over the next years, but also because of the initiatives and programs that the World Zionist Organization and other related uh, organizations there push up. So don't underestimate the importance of these elections and 52% of the votes in the recent WZC elections were for those in the center and center right. Let's contrast that to the Conference of Presidents. Uh, unfortunately, despite all our efforts, despite our pushing very hard on this issue with a lot of quality friends and colleagues in the, in the Conference of Presidents, we, didn't do, do, we did not do nearly as well as 52%. And it's a challenge that we face because frankly, we at ZOA, we see the people that support us out there. We see with Jews, committed Jews at large, what issues they are concerned about and what they see. And it really hurts us and troubles us when an issue is integral to the survival of the state of Israel, integral to the right of Jews to live anywhere, integral to the safety and security of Jews worldwide. It, it hurts and pains us to see that we can't seem to get Jewish organizations, many of them, to understand that this really should be their first, second, and third charge in what they pursue. And frankly, the Conference of Presidents, in my opinion, and I'm only speaking for myself, I'm not even speaking for ZOA, in my opinion, I don't believe the Conference of Presidents was set up to be arguing and fighting on all sorts of other issues. It was set up to fight for Israel and have a consensus on Israel and to digress and go into all sorts of other issues, which aren't really integral to the welfare and security of the Jewish people and, and, and the Jewish state of Israel. I have a real concern with that. So I wanted to really kick it off with that. I'd like to in, uh, invite my dear friend, our national president, one of the great Jewish leaders we have, Mort Klein. I'd like him to comment <laughs> in his thoughts on some of these issues. Mort also, we issued, you may have noticed, we issued a press release today welcoming our dear friend, Minister Gilad Erdan, who will become both the new Israel ambassador to the America and also the new ambassador to the United Nations. He's going to have two jobs at once. Great friend of ZOA, great friend of Mort Klein, great friend of mine, and we're very, very excited about that appointment. So Mort, please share your thoughts with us on all these issues, and then when you finish your introductory remarks, we'll turn to the Q&A. Well, thank you, Mark. Uh, that was an entire webinar in and of itself. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's peculiar. John Forster Dulles in 1956 didn't want to hear from this, uh, the 16 different Jewish organizations in America at the time, significant organizations. So he said, I want you to form a group and I only want to hear from one of you. So the group was formed called the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. And what has happened is not only do they hear on occasion from the Conference of Presidents, they hear from the other groups as well. So Dulles's wish to only hear one voice didn't work anyway. He hears from uh, many different voices. Too often their voices, I'm afraid, are, uh, are, are promoting opinions which ZOA and even and Israel as well uh, strongly disagree with. Um, <laughs> I also want to say, uh, <laughs> How pleased I am that my dear friend of 20 years, Gilad Erdan, is now the new ambassador of the U.S. and the U.N. Uh, he invited me to speak at a, a BDS seminar, a BDS conference that he held uh, this past year in Israel. In fact, he, I was honored to have him sit next to me and my wife, Rita, uh, at the opening dinner. And when he got up to speak, I was thrilled when he praised the tremendous energy of ZOA and its leaders for what they do for Israel. And he said, I wish and hope everybody would have the same kind of energy. <laughs> so uh, it was really very kind of him to make those public remarks at the dinner in front of hundreds of uh, people that were there. I was one of, this, one of, one of many, many speakers. <laughs> I also want to mention that uh, we were the only significant group to predict that, uh, uh, to predict that Oslo would become a, a total disaster. 
We were the only one to vote against the gas withdrawal. It's one of the very few votes we've had in the Conference of Presidents. Uh, the vote was 50 to one. Uh, every group voted to support throwing 10,000 Jews out of their homes uh, in Gaza and Northern Samaria. We voted against it, uh, predicting that there would be Hamas rockets and this would be a disaster. Tragically, it did become a disaster. <laughs> and uh, uh, another thing we're very proud of, we are very proud of, is that we were in, in the forefront of passing the legislation to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, that was Senator John Kyle and Newt Gingrich, uh, uh, and ZOA was the only organization initially to get involved. No group wanted to support that, none. It was only after we got Robert Dole, the majority leader, to sign on to that legislation and suddenly 30 members of the Senate signed on because of that. Only then did APAC and other groups start to get involved in that issue. So we really led in having that issue become reality. And thank God, a number of years later now, uh, the embassy was actually moved because of the legislation that ZOA was initially involved in, in 1995. <laughs> um, should I go in and talk about the, the Hayas issue, do you want to ask me a question about it, Mark? Well, let's 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 start with some questions. <laughs> I am very I, I am very excited on a minor matter. It's going to be Lagba Omer tonight. So those of us who follow these customs tomorrow, we get to get we get to take a haircut. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if we'll find a barber anywhere, but it's 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 aspirational. So so Mort, um, you have so much on your plate most days and most weeks. So as we get into this first question, I want you to share with folks who may not really understand what, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, how this added yet a whole, almost full-time other effort to what we were doing otherwise. So with that, let me go on to the first question and maybe you can answer and address that as well. So Mort, why did ZOA take on this very long shot, long shot fight? How did ZOA effectively become the lead organization on this issue and, and, and in this fight? <laughs> uh, well, we uh, worked on this campaign. <laughs> While all of us are working at home, not in the office, if we were in the office, it would have been even more effective, I believe. <laughs> and the reason for the campaign <laughs> was when we found out that the chair, the immediate past chair of Hayas, Diane Loeb, L-O-B, <laughs> <laughs> had been nominated to be the chair. The way it works is a nominating committee. <laughs> there were only two people, as best I understand it, that really applied for this job. Uh, the nominating committee voted, uh, it was a split vote su supporting Diane Loeb to become the chair. <laughs> then it comes to the Conference of Presidents uh, members. And over the years I've been there, it's really a rubber stamp. It's unanimous because there's no op opposition once the nominating committee decides on its candidate. <laughs> And since I became aware she was chair of Hayas, I knew that Hayas <laughs> was a real problem. Hayas uh, was an organization that didn't advocate for Israel or Jews. Uh, their primary mission uh, was not that, and under Diane Loeb's chair, their primary mission is to resettle non-Jews, largely Muslims, in, to America. And as ADL polls show, 74 to 93% of Mideast Muslims, those Muslims from the Middle East, are anti-Semitic. And they're also, by the way, anti-gay, anti-women. <laughs> and so <laughs> the fact that Hayas is bringing, is helping resettle these people to America is not good for America and it's not good for Jews. They're bringing in people that have strong antipathy toward Jews, strong antipathy toward uh, uh, Israel, which means when they become citizens, they will be part of a lobbying effort on Capitol Hill to fight against Israel, and they may be doing things that'll harm Jews as well. <laughs> Since she was the chair, <laughs> I realized that her Jewish life was primarily involved <laughs> with thinking about how do we get resettle more Muslim and other non-Jewish refugees. Her, her job at Hayas was not to think about how we can help Israel or how we can help Jews. So I was worried, uh, one, <laughs> that she was not familiar with the issues about Israel and Jews, and two, uh, that her views would be the same as Hayas's, which are quite uh, uh, left-wing. <laughs> uh, if you want, I can go on and explain some of the details about that. <laughs> so yeah, Mort, I, what I would like to do as, as you talk about that, because we get targeted a lot of times by folks that 
think that we're trying to target this group or that group. Clearly, as Jews who have suffered and been persecuted throughout the years, okay, we see what's happening in Europe now, where the anti-Semitism against Jews is just absolutely horrific. So how can folks, well-meaning folks, who see what Jews are suffering in Europe at this time, and in large part by these refugees, and in large part, not all, but in large part by a lot of uh, the, the uh, communities that have come in from outside Europe, who are, are, are mainly Muslim, why, why are we being attacked all the time for being against you know, Muslims or, or, being, or being for the president who put on his travel ban? As Jews in America, don't we have a legitimate right to be concerned? There are really two countries in the world that are hospitable to Jews, the Jewish state of Israel and the United States of America. Don't we have some rights to look at what is in our political interest? <laughs> Of course, uh, our issue is not that we have any hostility toward Muslims per se, as a religion. We never criticize uh, uh, Hindus or Buddhists. They're not Jewish uh, or Christians. Uh, we only criticize uh, uh, groups when they seem to show antipathy toward Jews or Israel. And as I said, since the vast majority of Muslims from the Middle East are anti-Semitic, ADL polls show that. Uh, and because we see how Muslims have acted toward Jews in Europe, been many, many attacks against Jews and others by Muslims. <laughs> that, that makes us concerned. And another major concern we had with Hayas is under Diane Loeb's watch, Hayas has collaborated with terrorist affiliated groups <laughs> like Islamic Relief USA. <laughs> uh, Islamic Relief USA uh, uh, parent group is Islamic Relief Worldwide, which is on Israel's and UAE's list of terrorist organizations. <laughs> this is a terrorist regime. They fund Hamas. They work with the, uh, with the viciously anti-Semitic Muslim Brotherhood. <laughs> in fact, there, there is a major British bank that has closed the accounts of the Islamic Relief, this group. Uh, uh, Bangladesh, won't, which is a Muslim country, won't even allow the uh, Islamic Relief uh, worldwide uh, uh, work on refugees there because they were afraid they're gonna ra radicalize them. In fact, Islamic Relief Worldwide was involved with the flotilla, the Turkish flotilla <laughs> against Israel in the Gaza uh, issue. <laughs> and in addition to Islamic Relief Worldwide, <laughs> they also work with CARE, the Council on Arab Islamic Relations, who was an unindicted co-conspirator conspirator involved in funding Hamas. So this is uh, groups uh, that they work with. In fact, Hayas has had joint protests in DC and Philadelphia with CARE, a viciously anti-Israel pro-BDS group. Uh, and uh, uh, only last week, Diane Loeb's Hayas proclaimed that they don't partner with BDS groups. But in fact, they sign letters with, and work with CARE, a BDS group. They sign letters with Muslim Public Affairs Committee a pro-BDS group who, by the way, has publicly stated Israel should not exist. They sign letters with them, with Jewish Voices for Peace, with If Not Now, with Trua, all of which support BDS. <laughs> so they work with BDS groups and give legitimate legitimacy uh, to pro-BDS uh, uh, groups uh, uh, as well. And, uh, and when it comes to uh, Israel, <laughs> they have an office there. What do they do in Israel? They file lawsuits against Israel who are trying to deport illegal African Eritreans from Israel, illegal, who are disproportionately become criminals in Tel Aviv and elsewhere. And they file lawsuits telling Israel they have to keep these uh, illegal uh, immigrants in Israel, something very uh, hostile to Israel, something that really hurts Israel. Uh, and, and by the way, they don't even call themselves uh, their original name, Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. They now call themselves Hayas, and they say they do this because they say the name Hebrew no longer represents uh, the organization. They openly say we're really not Jewish, and they're not. And they do virtually nothing for Jews, only for non-Jews. <laughs> and uh, one of the worst things is they have signed letters. The top two leaders of Hayas, Mark Hetfield, the executive director, Rabbi Linda Rosen, I believe the vice president, signed a letter 
condemning those who malign, harass, and smear the female Farrakhan of our era. This vicious Jew hater, Linda Sarsour, Hayas defended her, condemned those who smear and harass her, <laughs> and went further. They said, we publicly state our commitment to work alongside Linda Sarsour for a more just and equal society. Linda Sarsour is the female Farrakhan of our times. She praises Jew killers by name. She says Zionism is creepy. She, uh, uh, she praises stone throwing against uh, Jews as courageous. And Hayas says, we want to work as allies with Linda Sarsour. And they actually allowed Linda Sarsour to do a fundraiser for them. This vicious, main, major public anti-Semite. And when, so I spoke to, I, when I spoke to leaders of Hayas about this, they refused to respond about concern of defending Linda Sarsour and saying they'll work with Linda Sarsour. They would not uh, respond to my uh, concern, uh, request to them about uh, my concerns, uh, uh, deep concerns about them uh, praising and legitimizing and praising Linda Sarsour. Uh, in addition, I have to add, <laughs> people don't know this. We put it out. They did a major event with none other than Congresswoman Ilan Omar, the most vicious anti-Semite in all of Congress. And they said that they are honored to be hosting this event with her, that she is an inspiration to people. <laughs> There's a picture of Mark Hetfield, the executive director of Hayas, and Omar on Hayas's Facebook. <laughs> and in their press release about it, there's a link to vote for Omar for Congress. <laughs> And finally, finally, there's a conflict of interest with fighting anti-Semitism with Hayas. Hayas works with UNRWA, United Nations Relief Works Association. They're a viciously anti-Semitic Israel bashing group. They work with UNRWA. And let me tell you something else. When America, when, when the United Nations passed this hideous Obama-backed resolution, 2334, saying everything past the 67 line, all of Eastern and Western Jerusalem is Arab occupied territory. And there was a group of congressmen who said, we have to punish UN for this terrible resolution. Hayas put out a press release condemning those congressmen for condemning the UN for this resolution. And I've never seen Hayas ever make any statement, public or private that I know of, criticizing the United Nations. So this is a group, <laughs> and so as chair of this group, who's far left and has been hostile to the interests of Israel and Jews and doesn't work for Israel and Jews, uh, uh, we became very concerned that the person who's chair of this organization is not the right person to be the chair of a pro-Israel, pro-Jewish umbrella group called the Conference of Presidents. Okay, Mort, so let's just close out one, one piece there. So they, Hyas has been involved in, in lawsuits against uh, the U.S. government and, and the president. Mm -hmm. Uh, in connection with their interest in bringing uh, unvetted refugees into this country from Syria. Uh, they've been involved in lawsuits in Israel to try to force Israel. It, it's almost, if, if it weren't so sad, it would almost be comical that Israel, which gets attacked for everything, now is being attacked because people think they should have open borders to, to allow not just pa Palestinians, but really Africans and anyone else that, that isn't allowed to go into any other country in the Middle East or Africa, supposedly Israel should be the country to let them in. Okay, so we have lawsuits by highest there. What about in Europe? What about there are Jews in Europe that are suffering anti-Semitism? So what is highest doing about the Jews in Europe, the Jews in France, that are afraid to live there, Jews in several other countries there, which don't have the numbers that they do in France and in British and, and in the UK. What does highest do to help promote uh, the Jews in those countries who want to come to the US or Israel? Is, I, is highest helping them to your knowledge? Well, as, as far as I know, they are not involved with helping Jews from England or France or South Africa or other countries who are having increasing problems with anti-Semitism and even vi physical violence uh, to want to come to Israel or America, <laughs> they're not involved <laughs> and they should be involved. <laughs> so again, uh, they do not, they do virtually nothing to help Israel or Jews. And there are Jews in need around the world and they have turned a blind eye 
uh, to these people. And because of all these reasons, this is why when the vote came to the 53 members of the conference, and in the 27 years, almost 27 years I'm there, when there was a vote for the person nominated by the nominating committee, it's always been unanimous. And this time out of 53 votes, she needed 27 to get elected. She only got 30. Some say 31, 30 or 31, <laughs> barely getting a majority. Uh, the rest of the, uh, the organizations either put it against her, abstained or refused to vote. So this was unprecedented that almost half the groups in the conference did understand that this is the, not the right person for this job uh, in terms of, her, of Hayas's actions and in terms of her own background and not really dealing with how do we help Israel and Jews. This has not been part of her life's work. Uh, okay, more. So more. Uh, it, it, it's sad that, uh, <laughs> that they have a $51 million budget. Almost none of it goes for, for anything toward Jews. And they, by the way, they get at least $24 million a year from the United States uh, government uh, to resettle people uh, uh, who are not Jewish. So, uh, you know, this is an organization that by the definition and requirement of the Conference of Presidents, which means their primary mission needs to be under the rules of the Conference of Presidents to advocate for Israel and Jews, they are an inappropriate member of the Conference of Presidents and really shouldn't be there. Mort, um, we've heard you and I are aware that there were other organizations and important individuals, many important individuals, some who are on this webinar with us, who were with ZOA. There's a lot of paperwork and resolutions going back and forth during this 10-day period from the, the Arab Shabbat announcement uh, of, of uh, this nomination, which obviously surprised everyone. So in terms of these other organizations and important individuals who were, quote, whizzy away, but did not really want to go public, but didn't want to be on record as voting with us. Let's talk about that for a bit. What are your thoughts and, and, and comments on that? And what can you share with our webinar audience? Well, uh, <laughs> look, this was a secret vote. <laughs> we know some of those who voted against uh, this woman. Uh, a couple of the people did go public. Most did not. And uh, it's one of the problems, frankly, in the American Jewish world, the American Jewish organization world, are too many Jewish leaders are afraid to stand up and proudly and courageously promote what's right for, Amer for the Jews of America and the world and promote what's best for Israel. <laughs> and that's one of the uh, sad things about Hayas is they don't do anything for Jews. You know, this, it's just ridiculous. There should have been a unanimous vote against them. <laughs> but uh, Jewish people are afraid they'll be attacked. They're, they're afraid that they'll be called Islamophobes because they vote ag against an organization who resettles largely Muslims. Uh, and as I say, we have nothing against Muslims or Islam. We have something against the way a disproportionate number of Muslims act toward Jews in Israel. That's why we're hostile to Muslims, not because we were hostile to Islam, uh, per se, just as we're not hostile to Christianity, uh, Hinduism, or Buddhism. <laughs> and I wish more Jews, Jewish leaders, would stand up and be counted and, and tell the truth of their feelings and concerns. <laughs> and I have to say, the leadership of the conference, we're all in support of, uh, of, of this woman and uh, never expressed uh, any concerns about her when there are many concerns to be expressed. Mort, so we've been criticized, ZOA's been criticized, you've been mm -hmm. criticized. You've been criticized extensively for ZOA going after Hyas. And in fact, we had some issues mm -hmm. in the conference a year or so mm -hmm. ago on it. So given this criticism that ZOA gets for going after Hyas, mm -hmm. and you've laid out some of the issues and concerns we have with Hyas, so why do you feel the need, why does ZOA feel the need to continue to do this when we continue to get criticized, we continue to get pilloried, we continue to get lambasted, and you might even argue no good comes out of it except stress aggravation and not even a pat on the back. <laughs> Look, <laughs> some good comes out of this. <laughs> now Diane Loeb, I think, is acutely aware that she'll be watched very carefully. Uh, remember, uh, we did get some sort of compromise. The conference agreed to postpone 
Diane Loeb's taking the chair, the chair chairmanship, if I can use that term, a year from now. <laughs> we'll be watching her and seeing what she does. And she'll be very conscious uh, when she becomes chair, if she becomes chair, she's supposed to, uh, about the position she takes, knowing that we will be watching her and holding her accountable. <laughs> I think that was very important. I think it also sends a message to other Jewish organizations uh, that they have to start changing their attitudes and doing what's best for Jews in Israel uh, and not simply wanting the world to love us for what we do for others. It's fine to do things for others, but our first uh, priority as a member of the Conference of Presidents of major American Jewish organizations is to fight for Israel and Jews. <laughs> and I think these campaigns uh, have made others acutely aware of the problems within uh, the Jewish organizations, <laughs> and hopefully there'll be some changes. That's why we had almost uh, half the people refused to vote for her uh, when they heard about all this. I, I didn't mention another horrible thing. Uh, they had a major rally in New York, uh, Hayas did, and who was their keynote speaker? Keith Ellison, a vicious Israel basher in Congress, was their keynote speaker uh, uh, at a rally. So uh, this uh, organization has nothing to do with Jews or Judaism or Israel. Uh, in fact, uh, Mark Hetfield said, we are Jewish organizations. All of our board members are Jewish. And I said, well, if General Electric or IBM, uh, if their entire board was Jewish, that wouldn't make IBM or GE a Jewish company. It's what they do, what they say, what their mission is. That's what matters, not who's on the board and who uh, leads the organization. I would say okay, more. Kufi, Christians United for Israel is more of a Jewish group uh, than Hayas is, because although virtually all their, their leaders are Christian, they do what they can for Israel and for the Jewish people. Mort, many objective viewers who are not necessarily uh, in the ZOA camp and who don't necessarily agree with ZOA on many mm -hmm. issues, many of them have wondered why uh, apparently she, Ms. Loeb, is very talented in the business world, but is virtually unknown mm -hmm in the Jewish establishment world, other than her stint as chair of Hyas. And many folks have raised the question, have been concerned, how did this person who was frankly virtually unknown in the Jewish establishment world get nominated for this very prestigious position, which has routinely been called one of the most important lay positions in the Jewish nonprofit world? What, what can you share with us on this? Look, the best of my understanding, <laughs> Anyone who is a, a past chair or chair of a member organization of the Conference of Presidents, 53 organizations, uh, can apply and say, I want to be chair of the conference. So she apparently applied. She's allowed to under the rules of the conference. <laughs> uh, and uh, as far as I know, only one other person applied. Uh, he was actually a very decent person, a centrist, who no one would have had any trouble with. <laughs> and. Uh, You'll have to ask the committee as to why they, in a split vote, decided they would rather have Diane Loeb. I, I don't know why they made that decision, uh, but uh, uh, only two people applied to the best of, the best of my knowledge. Okay, so having lived through the 10-day effort from that Arab Shabbat announcement to literally the Tuesday vote, both on creating the chair-elect position and then the uh, election, of, of Ms. Loeb as chair elect, uh, effective June. What has been, what is your view as you kind of try to absorb all this? What has been your view as to the reaction that you've received and ZOA has received both to the effort that we put forth and the results that happened in terms of the 31 to eight with the uh, 10, 15 abstentions and no votes? <laughs> well, <laughs> those who are with, with us uh, call me and tell, us, uh, tell me that we're heroes and they're deeply appreciative. <laughs> there are others. I've gotten calls from <laughs> women heads of Jewish, so-called Jewish organizations who tell me that the only reason I did this is because she's a woman. Can you imagine anything more ridiculous than that? I, I could care less if she's a woman or a man. It means nothing to me. In fact, most of the top jobs at ZOA happen to be held by women. That's only because they're the best people we could find. It's not because they're women. We best. If the best people we at ZOA would find would be men, there'd be only men there. 
The best will be women. There'll be only women there. We are totally gender blind. We could care less. <laughs> I've also been called by people and said, you're doing this because she's anti-Trump. You know, she filed, I believe, three lawsuits against Donald Trump, which make, is another reason it was not a good idea to have her as chair, because Donald Trump, the president, will not want to deal with a person who sued him. So this reduces our influence with the president of the United States. And I've had people say we're angry at her because she uh, is anti-Trump. Ridiculous nonsense. That has no meaning to us. All we care about is w would she be good for Israel and the Jewish people? Politics have nothing whatsoever to do with it. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are many people who refused to vote for her, didn't vote against her, and it was because of our campaign. <laughs> And I've talked to a number of those people, and I think we help give them the strength to have the courage not to vote for someone who is a bad choice for this job. Um, uh, and as I and I and the media actually, the Jewish media was actually mixed. There were some good articles telling the whole truth, and there were some bad articles. But it was actually mixed. Usually, it's a very anti-ZOA. This time, it was not. It was mixed. So, so given the fact that there was a little bit of a compromise that uh, they created this new position chair elect, she does not become chairman for a chairperson for a year. Given the fact that we think that we hope that she'll be sensitized to what she kind of heard through this process, uh, given sort of the better perhaps uh, reaction we've gotten in the media, given certainly all the calls and uh, uh, letters and emails and support that uh, ZOA and, and you have gotten over this. So as we are coming to this post period, what are your feelings about the results? <laughs> worth worth the effort, not worth the effort, do it again? 100% a hundred, a hundred worth the effort. I would do it again. In fact, I would work even harder because I was told by many people in the conference that they already have 40 or 45 votes for her. I'm wasting my time. And this actually had a little impact. I mean, slowed me down a little bit. It turned out they only got 30 votes. Had I known that, I would have worked even harder if I knew we were that close to stopping this uh, inappropriate uh, nomination. <laughs> and, and we also exposed Hayas, that Hayas is not a Jewish organization. They, their primary mission is not to help Jews or Israel. In fact, almost none of their mission is to help Jews or Israel. They're to help non-Jewish, largely Muslim refugees be resettled in America. And tragically, the vast majority of them are anti-Semitic and Israel bashers. <laughs> so we've exposed that. More people know about it. There have been articles from coast to coast about Hayas because people thought Hayas is a Jewish organization. <laughs> Look, Hayas brought my family and me to America. I was born in a displaced persons camp in Germany. My parents are Holocaust survivors. <laughs> they brought me over, got us a room. We had a a large room in South Philly with another couple. Imagine there were two families, each with, two, with the one child each, living in one large room, and we were grateful to have it. So they did wonderful, wonderful work historically, but that's now changed because there's so few, uh, there are fewer, much fewer Jew, Jewish refugees, and they can go to Israel. They don't have to be, be helped to come into another country. Hayas's role in terms of Jewish work has changed. Look, they can do what they're like. I'm angry at Hayas because they continue to prey on Jewish instincts and say we're a Jewish group when they're not. And also, I'm angry at them because they're bringing anti-Semites and people who are anti-women uh, and even anti-American help resettle them in America, which is bad for America and bad for Jews. So I'm very angry. I think the work they do is hostile and harmful to the Jewish people and to Israel. <laughs> More people now know that. Uh, there, as I said, there are articles all over the country about this, and there's going to be more articles. Uh, and that was a very, very important point uh, to have made. And uh, I think other groups will now be much more careful to be signing awful letters that are hostile to Israel, that they will be exposed. <laughs> and uh, I hope no one will do the way Hayas did and accept Linda Sarsour, this female Farrakhan, as a fundraiser. She actually did fundraising events for uh, Hayas, they raised, she raised $45,000. Uh, they should never have allowed that. I can assure you, Linda Sarsour would never do a fundraising event for APAC or ZOA or B'nai B'rith. That really tells you who Hayas is, that the biggest female anti-Semite in America 
would want to raise money for Hayas. So no, this was an important campaign. I'm glad I did it. I only wish I'd worked even harder. Okay, so Mort, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, we have the New York Times, we have the Jewish Week. You, you, you have a very limited set of, of Jewish media and Jewish distribution uh, uh, sort of channels to get uh, the news and information out. Now, thank goodness, uh, social media for good and bad is there. And thankfully, there are, there are you know, organizations like JNS, uh, which J Jewish National Syndicate, which really, if you go on there, you, you'll actually get to see the true story, the correct story on, on many of these events. And there are others who are more sympathetic to our cause. How do you see that playing out and helping in the ability to get out our position and our views on so many of these critical issues? <laughs> Look, even Jewish media, which are generally quite uh, liberal politically, <laughs> they usually will publish, uh, frequently will publish our op-eds or our letters and let our voice be heard, even though the editorial staff will be disagreeing. <laughs> and it's a shame, it's sad, it's almost tragic really that the Jewish media isn't more pro-Israel and more hostile to those who are anti-Israel than they are. But I, I'm grateful that we have the JNS, Jewish National Syndicate. They're fair and balanced. They tell the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel, unlike uh, most of the other Jewish media. <laughs> but one of the biggest number of articles against Hayas in this country have come from the bastion of Jewish liberalism. Los Angeles, the LA Jewish Journal has had article after article about Hayas, complaining that they don't do anything for Jews. <laughs> and they were going to publish an article uh, with respect to an interview they did with Mark Hetfield, the executive director of Hayas, where he said all sorts of things that weren't true. And they uh, called me and allowed me to respond to every one of their questions. And they published my almost full response to all of his uh, statements, which were not accurate. And we never saw things like that before. So things are changing slowly but surely. <laughs> and especially when I would talk to them about uh, embracing uh, uh, Linda Sarsour and Ilan Omar and Keith Ellison, even liberal Jews despised these anti-Semites. And that was a factor in them showing more sympathy to our campaign uh, than in other campaigns that we've uh, had. So, more. I want to get a couple of the cues, uh, Q and A cues that we've gotten in um, from our viewers out there. So, I want to finish with one question before we go to those, and I think it's very important. One of the major issues that ZOA is concerned about, we mentioned it earlier, is the upcoming fight, and it'll be a fight and a battle over Israel's right to assert sovereignty mm -hmm. over portions of Judea and Samaria. You know it, I know it. It's gonna be a major, major issue. We've already seen uh, our non-friends who are starting to make a big deal about it. We've seen uh, you know, a very troublesome article, uh, op-ed in the New York Times over the weekend. So with that out there and what we saw in, in, in these 10 days in the COP Conference of Presidents elections. So what is that uh, election process that you and I and ZOA went through? What does that foretell for you about the upcoming challenges that will be arising when the assertion of sovereignty issue comes be before the conference of presidents? <laughs> well, clearly, um, the liberal Jewish groups, many of them, if not most, if not all, will be opposed to applying sovereignty to the Jordan Valley and Judea and Samaria. <laughs> Uh, and clearly, we've already seen Joe Biden publicly condemn uh, uh, the possibility of Israel applying sovereignty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joe Biden has also, by the way, said he wants to start funding the Palestinian Authority again, uh, an authority which pays Arabs to murder Jews, even though we have a Taylor Force Act, which says you can't fully fund them anymore. <laughs> I'm very troubled about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I think the bottom line, and I, you know, and I was very upset that a so-called right of center guy, Dan Pipes, I'll mention his name, wrote an article saying why he's against applying sovereignty. And we at COA published an article demolishing every one of his uh, false uh, assertions. Uh, and I'm very surprised 
that Daniel Pipes, for whatever political or financial reasons, who knows why, he decided to do this in terms of maybe fundraisers. I don't know. <laughs> but I think the bottom line is, if the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and Gantz has supported him in this, apply sovereignty, it will be passed by the Knesset, and the U.S. government will support it. So no matter what happens in America or the world, if the Prime Minister of Israel moves forward to do this, nothing will stop it. I just hope that Prime Minister Netanyahu will not be influenced uh, by those who are hostile to Israel <laughs> and others who uh, urge him not to do so. So the bottom line is the Prime Minister of Israel. And I believe okay. they will go through and do the right thing. Good. We hope so. So uh, even though we're coming up to five of eight, we actually start a few minutes late. So uh, with everyone's indulgence, so you can stay and not stay, we are going to go a few minutes past the hour. We won't go too much longer, but we'll go a few minutes past the hour and, and past the hour we had, we had, we'd indicated. I'm going through uh, a lot of great questions that have come in from our viewers in the webinar. A number of them you've addressed, so I'm, I'm not going to kind of go through those. There were questions about whether there were other presidents, other presidents in the Conference of Presidents who would agree with ZOA. I think we certainly covered that quite a bit. There were questions about specific organizations. And, you know, again, organizations are entitled to keep uh, uh, th their own views and thoughts private as to whether they voted or not. But I do have uh, uh, Andy Borens of AEPI is very proud to have stated that he had voted no um, on on both the uh, election of Diane and the issues relating to Hyas. So so that's certainly one organization besides ZOA. There are others who we know and, and speculate, but you know it's really for them, not us, to indicate. There were a lot of questions about that. There were a number of questions about how many organizations are there in the Conference of Presidents. It is well known that they, uh, there are uh, 53 organizations uh, in, in the conference, uh, they, they, uh, we, we are told. Uh, clearly, I think most uh, observers understand that there are 10 or 12, you know, major established organizations, if that. Certainly more ZOA is there. I'm not going to go through the list of some of our friendly uh, colleagues who are some of the other major establishment organizations. But certainly, there are a lot of organizations that really are not major organizations, yet, in effect, they're able to help carry the vote on an issue like this. So what are your thoughts on that and whether there should be any adjustment on the voting? Should there always be one vote, one, one organization, given the disparity between the size of organizations? Well, I, look, I think the larger organizations tend to be more liberal. Uh, the people, the organizations on our side tend to be on average somewhat smaller, <laughs> uh, but they all, rep, they all represent a big chunk of Jews, uh, whether they're small or larger. And so I think... <laughs> Uh, it is fine uh, the way it is done. I think the vote should not be pri private. I think it should be public. Everyone, all the members and donors to the organization should know how they are voting. So I, I don't agree with the, 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 secret, the, the secrecy of the vote. <laughs> uh, other people who voted with us, who uh, I'm allowed to say, are as, uh, as young Israel uh, voted with us and, uh, uh, and camera voted with us. Uh, uh, others, it's up to them to say. Uh, but the, the very fact that uh, almost half didn't vote for Hayas shows an enormous victory for ZOA's cam uh, led campaign. And there were others who helped us, but we really led this campaign. It was an enormous victory. And uh, <laughs> my concern is there are organizations in the conference like Hayas, whose primary mission is not to advocate for Israel and Jews. Uh, I'm not going to mention them on this uh, telecast. Uh, but there are some that have no business being in the Conference of Presidents because that's not their mission. The Conference of Presidents sh should have only organizations whose primary mission is to fight for Israel and Jews, nothing else. And there's quite a number who, whose primary mission is not that. Okay, so Mort, we've good. got a couple of questions. One of our dear friends, who I'm not going to uh, uh, call him out uh, positively, but one of our dear friends and strong supporters um, asked <laughs> some questions about some of the other organizations who have either produced data that kind of support what you say and have, have done other research that support what we say. And, and, and the question was, why aren't those organizations, you know, supporting us or why are they silent on those issues? I think it's better left for them to answer those questions. We don't need to uh, comment on what uh, 
on how to interpret what their actions are. Uh, we think silence uh, speaks uh, volumes. I will tell you the uh, Anti-Defamation League ADL, <laughs> it's their own polls that they did a number of years ago that show that uh, around the world, almost, almost half of the Muslims are anti-Semitic. In the Middle East, 74 to 93% are. And yet uh, the ADL has attacked us and condemned us uh, on our campaigns of concern uh, about Muslims. And again, it's not about their religion. It's about what Muslims are doing and saying. So, Mort, we have a question from one of our senior staff, someone you and I respect greatly. So we're going to ask, the, I'm going to ask this question to you. Uh, he asks, and I'm going to tweak it a little bit. He, he says, Miss Loeb says she didn't know what Hyas was doing in working with CARE and Sarsour. So there's really, you know, two answers as to how she could say that. And I'm not going to characterize his words. Ha having said that, uh, if she says she didn't know what Hyas was doing while working with CARE and Sarsour, um, and in our discussions, your discussions with other members of the conference of president, do people believe her denials on that issue? As chair of HIAS for almost four years, of course she knows about the major programs they have with Islamic Relief USA and CARE and signing letters defending Linda Sarsour and praising Linda Sarsour and hosting anti-Semite Ilan Omar and, and bringing Keith Ellison as a keynote speaker. Of course she knows that. Just like you, Mark, as chairman of ZOA, you know about all of our programs. I don't do anything, virtually nothing, without consulting you to make sure you're okay with it. So, no, there's no doubt in my mind that Diana and Loeb knew what they were doing, but her focus was on re resettling uh, Syrian Muslims and other Muslims and other non-Jews as opposed to worrying about the consequences for Israel or Jews. So, no, I have no doubt she knows what, what is going on. I, I can't believe she's so, that incompetent that she wouldn't know what her own organization is doing. It's not possible. Okay, as we wind up with the last few questions here, um, one of our friends uh, asks, one of our viewers, uh, if there were only two candidates, uh, why, was, why is there so little interest in the Conference of Presidents? I don't know if he means the Conference of Presidents as a whole or that position. I hear the, the gentleman asked, were others kept out? So I know you talked a little bit about it, but you know, for those who are kind of not that familiar, just to rephrase, he asked if there were only two candidates, why? Why is there so little interest in the Conference of Presidents were others kept out? <laughs> Look, any unpaid chair of, a, of an organization in the Conference of Presidents can apply. Uh, so, in the last 15 years, they changed the rules. There used to be a paid chair could apply, but now they changed that for various reasons. <laughs> Look, one of the reasons may be that there's less interest. There's a lot of work involved being chair of the conference. There is no pay, and you have to spend many tens of thousands of dollars in traveling and other expenses. <laughs> so you have to be a fairly wealthy person <laughs> who has some time to be able to do this job. And, uh, you know, it may be that they're... Uh, most people don't want to uh, spend significant funds and spend a lot of time when they have their own businesses or professions to deal with. Uh, also, in this era, where we have an incredible, incredibly increasing hostility to Israel, enormous increase in anti-Semitism, maybe people felt they don't want to get involved. It's too much misery and aggravation. They don't know how to resolve these issues. They'd rather not get involved. That's my speculation. I don't know the reality. Okay, we're gonna do two more questions. I regret that um, I cannot get there. Another 20 questions that have come in, Mort. Um, I'll give you a flavor of them. We've, we've tried discussing uh, a, a number of them, but we've got one very interesting question, which um, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot because I'm asking and, and you're answering versus vice versa. So we get a question, has ZOA discussed the possibility of leaving the conference? Has ZOA, considered forming, possibly forming an umbrella organization of right-wing pro-Israel Jewish groups. That encompasses several questions. So if you can answer that, we'll make that the next to last question. Well, I, I, I can say there are many people who've come to me about forming an alternative group of fervently pro-Israel Jewish groups 
alone to be in another alternative conference. <laughs> uh, no, we have not uh, considered leaving the conference, although I can say that if J Street, who two, two or three years ago was voted down when they wanted to join the conference, if they applied again and became a member of the conference, uh, I think then ZOE would have to think very seriously whether we want to sit with J Street. That would be one be basis of our considering whether we should leave. Uh, and maybe there's, a, and maybe if, you know, even to have Americans Friends of Peace Now, who supports BDS in Judea and Samaria, who takes very hostile views to Israel, uh, to, uh, and Amenu, there are some very extremist left-wing groups there. And, uh, you know, maybe we should talk about the comfort level we have sitting with these groups. But right now, no, we have not uh, uh, made any moves or decisions to uh, leave the conference. J Street would be a triggering point. We'd have to make a serious decision. Okay. So, Mort, um, there were, a, again, a series of other questions. I guess the theme, a theme of a couple of the questions go to, now that the vote has happened, now that we have this chair elect and there's a timeline and process, is this issue done? Uh, is there anything else that, say, ZOA, for instance, is there anything else that ZOA would intend to try to do relative to this process that happened? Uh, or is the focus really on trying to keep people's feet to the fire and make sure that in issues like assertion of sovereignty, the ZOA position is going to get a, not only a fair hearing and shake, but that we, we move to support Israel in very important and critical ways, which really should be the mission of, of the Conference of Presidents. I can tell you the organizations, the farther left organization of the conference, would be thrilled if ZOA left because then we'd have no voice within the conference at all. Uh, uh, then I wouldn't, I and you and I wouldn't be able to go to meetings and at least ask questions and bring up important issues. <laughs> so uh, I think it's important that our voice uh, is there <laughs> and should continue to be there. <laughs> it is troubling, but I will tell you, I've been told that Hayas and even the anti-defamation ADL uh, are considering uh, filing a complaint against us because of this very honorable campaign where we told only the truth of what Hayas's positions and actions were, uh, 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 that they're considering uh, asking the conference to take action against EOA. <laughs> if this happens, uh, I think we, uh, we will surely uh, move to take actions against other uh, organizations in the conference. If, if they decide to do this. Well, I can share with you as, as your colleague, <laughs> Uh, in the executive level at ZOA, that we will defend ZOA. We will defend ZOA firmly, fiercely, aggressively, and proactively. We are fighting for the right causes, the right issues. We're entitled to fight for them. And that's our job as a pro-Israel Jewish organization. And the rules of the conference are that any member of the conference can criticize another member of the conference as long as it's true and no name calling. Everything we said was true, and we never called names. We never made it personal. These organizations that have publicly said how we smeared Diana Loeb and it was a terrible personal vendetta, rubbish. We expressed and promoted the truth of Hayas's actions and policies. And we never, uh, there was never any personal attacks uh, on Diana Loeb or her integrity in any way, shape or form. So this is just a lie. And they say these, they promote these lies because to tell the truth that all of our statements are legitimate and of concern to most Jews, uh, that wouldn't uh, work in, in their campaign against us. So they lie and just say we're smearing and personal attacks, it's rubbish. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, we, we have so many other questions. We really have covered the theme of it. It's 8.08 now, so we actually are four minutes over our one hour. I just wanna close more. We don't have an open mic. If there was, I'm sure you'd get a standing ovation. Um, may you go from strength to strength. We see we got a lot of clapping hands going on out there. May you go from strength to strength. May you continue to fight. Please be heartened by the victories or the small victories we, we achieve. We have a huge, huge fight on our hands going forward with the assertion for sovereignty. And, and, and we need to be strong for that. So, and let me urge. 
Let me urge everyone on this call, if you're not a member of ZOA, join ZOA, strengthen us in numbers and resources so we can keep the fight going for the things you all care about. If you don't join us, you have no right to take pleasure in our campaigns and our battles. You must join us. And those who are already members, consider making an additional contribution to ZOA. We're having very rough times with this stock market problem and with this uh, black plague <laughs> that we're enduring, uh, that uh, it's been harder to raise funds. Please, all of you, help us as best you can. Go on our website, zoa.org. You'll see all the things we put out, tremendous stuff. Join us and help us so we can be a stronger voice on your behalf. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mort. I, I do want to just second what Mort said there. It's very, very important. As chair of the organization, Mort is the face of the organization. He's done this for 26 years. As I said, he's a beloved icon, and he is, uh, he is our Mr. Policy, and he's a face of the organization, and, and he has strong connections with, frankly, all of our major donors. But we still, at the end of the day, have to raise money for this organization to run and be successful. And we, we, so many of you out there are important donors, board members, donor society members. It's all very important. We appreciate every time Mort gets a nice letter or a pat on the back or a Yasha Koach, he sends them to me to see, and we're all so delighted with it. But beyond the Yasha Koachs, we also need money in the organization. So if you feel that way about the organization, Alan Jay's on the line, you can reach out to him, reach out to myself, Mort, Natalie, John Rosen, we can give you all the names of our staff folks. We really do need support, financial support during this very tough period of time. So Mort, I just want to administratively move over from you in our uh, webinar discussion to tell folks about some of our upcoming programs. And I'm reading this off of one of my several devices sitting in front of me. I don't want you to think I'm ignoring myself speak, but I am reading from one of my devices here. So we have several upcoming programs. Tomorrow night, Tuesday, May 12th at seven o'clock, the battle over Jerusalem's past, present, and future heritage, a matter of fact and faith, with Zev Orenstein, Director of International Affairs, the City of David Foundation, and, and also co-hosted by Howard Katzoff, our Deputy Director, ZOA. I just wanna tell folks that on our ZOA VIP mission in Israel this year, uh, in February, we had a treat beyond belief Zev Orenstein, who is a director, gave us a very private and special tour of kind of the new pathways that haven't even been opened in the year David. I'm sure we're gonna twist his arm, Alan, to do that again next year. Uh, Howard, who is instrumental, Howard Katzoff is instrumental in our uh, mission every year. Uh, he'll be on with, with Zev tomorrow night. And, and, and Zev is a terrific spokesperson and hopefully he'll join us next year on our Israel VIP mission. Wednesday, May 13th at one o'clock, Liz Burney, our fantastic director of special projects, has been running ZOA book clubs on a weekly basis. Our next one, and we've had, you know, 150, 200 people in each book club. Wednesday, May 13th, one o'clock, ZOA book club meeting number six. The author is Robert Spencer. The title of his book is, quote, <laughs> The Palestinian Delusion, the mm -hmm. catastrophic history of the Middle East peace process. So if you like book clubs, or if you don't like book clubs, but you like ZOA, <laughs> and if you don't like ZOA, but you like the ideas, or this author, join us for this book club on Wednesday, May 13th. Lastly, for this week, this is this week only, four events. Thursday evening, May 14th at seven o'clock, Israel's unity government an in-depth analysis of Israel's most pressing issues hosted by ZOA Michigan Executive Director, Kobe Erez. So we look forward to you joining us that program and all the others. Again, I wanna thank our dedicated staff. I wanna thank our donors and contributors, our board members. And I wanna thank Acharon Acharon Chaviv, last but not least, our beloved national president, Mort Klein, who fights for us every day. Mort. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for being a spectacular moderator, a host, and contributor to this program. And I, I might want to add, Zev Orenstein is a spectacular speaker. You'll learn things about Jerusalem you've never heard that'll make you so proud. And Robert Spencer is a spectacular speaker about the truth of the Arab-Islamic war against Israel. 
you'll learn things you never knew. There's no one better in the subject than Robert Spencer. So thank you, Mark, for uh, making people aware of those really important programs. Thank you. Okay. Alan, Natalie, Mort, we have tremendous staff that's on this, uh, we're wa that's watching this webinar. I'm not going to go through them all. I see all your faces out there on, on screen number one. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. And uh, Alan again, and Natalie, thank you very much. Everyone have a good night. And uh, Shabbat is really at the end of the week, but I want to wish you a good Shabbat at the end of the week. And it's Lagba Omer, so we can get a haircut tomorrow. Thank you and, all, and good night. I want to thank also Alan and Natalie and Liz Burney for the book club, for the great work they do in putting this all together. They really do especially extraordinary work in putting these very important programs together. This is better than any college seminar you'll ever attend. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Bye.